I'm going to give this intro from another bathroom remodel that I'm currently working on today. Let's give you a quick sneak peek in case you're one of the few people who don't have Instagram. Uh, I've been uploading videos every couple days of the progress of this bathroom remodel. Got all the shower tile done, working on the floor tile. I'm going to be doing the shower pan tile. Uh, actually, all the tile has to be in today so that I can grout tomorrow. This video isn't about this bathroom. It's about the bathroom I remodeled uh, a few months ago. There were a lot of questions and comments regarding shark bites in the last video. I'm going to do a shark bite specific video along with PEX, along with ABS, CPVC, and PVC in the near future. Sometime in this video series, uh, it just has to be addressed. Now, I've done quite a bit of research on these products and why there is some people who don't like them. And what I've found is there's very, very few people that don't like them. Those few are just quite vocal on social media. If you have any questions on the removal of this radiator, feel free to put them in the comment section. Um, I'll read them. Hopefully I'll get to answer them. If I don't answer them, someone else uh, might be able to answer them also. I can't believe how cool this octagon tile looks. This thing looks really, really cool. Once I get the white on the curb and this all in and grouted, it's going to look super cool. What do you guys think? You like the black floor? Okay, today is a short day knock on wood my my schedule is just this um, I gotta drain the system down so the water level gets oh quite a bit below these pipes because I gotta go down into the ceiling cut a hole to cap this one off this one here is easily accessible from the basement to cap off but yeah this thing's gotta go now I'm in the basement this is the expansion tank this is the, I believe this is the pressure regulator. We're going to shut this off here. This is the water supply to the boiler here. So now that that is off, I have to see if we can open this up. Hopefully... This works. There we go. Starting to get some water. Here's the oh geez. Probably out of that's not too bad. Just gonna let that drain, which is surprising. Uh, how clean that water looks. Usually it's going to come out rusty brown. So that leads me to believe that the the owners have kept up with their maintenance on um, draining it down and filling it back up once or yeah, probably once a year, getting all the rust out. It's pretty nasty in there. Huh? So put that right there. This here is a radiator key and even your, your baseboard hot water uh, also has this. Now that's air going in as the water is going out. So like I said the idea is to get the water level to come all the way down and quite a bit below that level of these pipes because I have to cap this off at about the level that the main run is at that goes around the house. Okay, hang on. Now I gotta cut a hole in the ceiling here to access the water line that goes to the radiator. I don't like doing but you gotta do what you gotta do. I gotta get it capped off so I can fill the water back up and these people have heat tonight. So I'm going to use my extension poles. You've seen these in a lot of my videos. 
oh, um, just to contain the dust off of the light fixture shelves and sink and things like that. So this is a drop ceiling. Um, there is lath and plaster above the drop. So who knows what this is made of. It's got some sort of plastery goop on the ceiling. I'm just going to dive right on in. Okay, that is the pipe. It's painted red, and you can see the original plaster ceiling up there. And ideally, I would put a cap right on the end of those threads there to the right of your screen where that elbow is. So that's the game plan. Minor drippage, nothing too concerning. There you go. This is the one that's in the seal Ooh, in the ceiling. And Ooh. it's about 14, 16 inches long. So I'm gonna grab a hold of it up here and see if I can back it out. What do you think? Is it gonna work? Usually it doesn't work work when they're this long. You wanna get as close to the actual threads as possible. But well See what happens here. Oh yeah, it's turning. still looks in pretty good condition. Now this section of pipe I can access and just use my sawzall and cut it all out but I need to get this this shut off off um, before it can go down. This slips off, I'll be smashing this light wall. That's not good. Threads are looking nice and clean, no corrosion or rust. So my cap, oh, that looks so good, very strange. So my cap will thread on there nicely. Not much light. Here, let me turn this light bulb on. There you go. Um, this red pipe is the heater pipe. Teflon tape, 
and a cap. Okay, here is here's a close up of the other side. So I will cut right here, uh, then unscrew this pipe and unscrew this angle. And this little stub here um, is where I'll be screwing on the cap. I'll be cutting away from the water pipes. <laughs> Don't want to make that mistake. And that typically does happen. Okay, there it is, capped off. Okay, time to fill it back up. Just crack this open. It's going to be a long process. Going slow. I'm starting with the furthest radiator away from the boiler. This is the air bleeder, so air is going out as water is coming in. It's going to take a while, but every radiator has to get bled out like this. I posted some pictures of me removing the radiator on Instagram, and there were quite a few comments and discussion about removing install, filling up and bleeding, so I'm going to add a, a little bit more information on the boiler system. Um, you're going to have a, a gauge similar to this. Some of them have a sight glass for water so you know when to turn the water off. This one has an automatic feed with a, um, an automatic pressure gauge. One thing you want to look at is um, this. you can see that there is a little sharpie mark on the uh, the, the gauge here for the pressure and the temperature and 20 uh, psi is a good hot psi uh, if you get up above 30 your pressure relief valve is going to start leaking that's going to be pretty common across most boilers under 30 is what you want your psi and 160 is about a good temperature of uh, oops of the water in the boiler you get up to 180 and, and closer to 200 uh, that's creeping up on the danger area um, when you first fill it up you bleed all the air you're gonna turn it on and you're gonna watch your gauge come all the way up to here and you're also gonna watch this one 